And you know our next guest from his roles in Sons, Sons of Anarchy and also Hellboy. Well, now he's playing an assassin who's ready to risk it all for love in the new film, Asher. Take a look. I want to take you back to your apartment. My place. And I want to do it right now. I just killed a man in the bathroom. I'm afraid if we don't leave right now, they're gonna call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the way to get her back to her place. All right, everybody, please welcome Golden Globe winner, Ron Perlman. <laughs> Good to see you, my man. Ah, ah. You too. There you go. Have a seat. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you Wow. I mean, so Ron, sweet. Ron, Ron, you're you're amazing, man. Amazing career. I know. You've I, been you've been like, <laughs> you, you should know. Forty years in the industry, over two hundred credits. I'm only twenty-eight. He only said like. <laughs> in the, before the womb. But how did you get? Had how did you get into life, acting, though? though? How did you get into acting? Um, okay, so the, the, the real story is they were having auditions in the high school play. 45 girls showed up, as, as happens, no boys. So they did a search, a worldwide search in the school to figure out. A worldwide search? <laughs> in the search? school. You know, but it was, you know, you know, what I'm, you know where I'm going with this. And um, it turned out that, you know, I was the only boy that showed up to the audition after much coaxing, which pretty much got me a role in the play. Yeah. Because the play was mostly about dudes. So um, that was it. I mean, I, it's, 45 girls and one guy. Works every time. The it ratios is. were in your favor. Sounds like you, an episode and of The Bachelor. It's, it's still, uh, <laughs> to this day, the only time I work is when everybody else says no. <laughs> oh, modesty is a beautiful it's, um, No, it's true, it's true, it's true. I can't get on board with that. But over the years, what was the best piece of advice you ever received? Um, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> and every wife in here and every... Oh, the God. women just... Well, the devoured. women are going woo and all the guys looked at their wives and said, yeah, I better clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean career advice? Uh, or anything. Any life advice. advice. Yeah, no, that would be it. That would be ha it. Happy wife, happy life. And you have this new film, Asher, which we saw a clip of earlier. Mm. And um, you're also a producer mm -hmm. on this film as well. So set it up for us. What is, what is the backstory? Asher is, um, you know, in the twilight of his years, he's uh, a gunslinger. He's an Israeli assassin living in New York. We never, ever find out who he's killing or why he's killing, but we assume that these people need killing. Um, and the, the other, so he's Asher, the other dudes he works with are Avi and Uzi and Abram and Lior, so they're all ex-Israeli Mossad, really elite dudes. Mm -hmm. And um, he lives in Brooklyn, he has this cute little brownstone which is now surrounded by all these high rises and he's walking down these streets that used to be, you know, like, you know, Taylors and you know, like old old school Brooklyn, and now it's all hipster. Um, now it's all you know, a coffee shops and and yoga art, studios, art galleries, and, and millennials. <laughs> so the the movie is is about two things that are becoming disposable: mm -hmm. both Asher as he's growing older and he's losing a little bit of his edge, and the neighborhood he's living in. And these two these two anachronisms are basically what. Propels the movie. And then, and then I kill a guy in the bathroom, as you saw. Or, or do I? Or he, did I? And he falls in love. Because that's a line I've never heard before. With that guy, right. <laughs> it would work, but I haven't heard it. And, and <laughs> I, I don't know what, I didn't see the clip, but did, did, you, did, did it get to the line where she says, so it's true, and I say what? And she says, men will say anything for sex. No. Well, yeah, that's the next but one. But I like it. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now, you are 
are kind of a, living in the hipster world in this mm -hmm. in this movie. Right I know here. You, yeah. Look at this. It's I mean, right here. It doesn't get any more hipster than this. But you That's have a couple. Right. Don't you have a couple millennials at home? I do, and those are the only two I have any use for. <laughs> uh, I. I uh, you have to love them. Uh, yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't get anybody that's younger than me. You know, I just, I got, I got, I, you know, automatically. Get out of here, kid. Go live a life. Come back and see me then, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, in a lot of your roles you take on, though, you have to do a lot of makeup. Hellboy. That's the only word. Yeah. And also, <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's the only thing that makes me hireable is, like, if they completely cover me up, then, oh, yeah, he's acceptable now. And, and, and also, Beauty and the Beast. But, well, I remember that. But what, what is the longest time it has ever taken you to put on all the makeup and prosthetics? Four years. <laughs> <laughs> no, and he only were, had one line. <laughs> there, there, there's a movie called Name of the Rose, and I wasn't originally supposed to be this character, but they, the last minute they fired somebody, hired me, flew me in. I'm playing a hunchback who's very deformed. And uh, so the first day, which is always the longest day, you're creating this makeup oh. as you're going. There, wow. there he is. Wow. Um, the first day is always the longest, and it turned out that not only... Um, on this first day that I have to just be that guy with that face. But it was the only day where they were gonna shoot me shirtless, so they had to put the hump on too, and it had to look like, you know. How long did that take? 12 and a half hours. Oh. Wow. oh. And a shooting day is only 14 hours, so, <laughs> so we had very little time to actually shoot the scene. Oh. You had an you hour know, and a half like, after you put all that Yeah, on. that's it, you know. It's oh amazing. man! But before we let you go, can you do one thing? I didn't. You're know, letting me go? No, I, I. We don't want to. We don't want to. But D you. D did I mess up? You might have. No, no, no. They told me I was like co-hosting. Yeah. <laughs> they said. They said it was going to be a three fit. Three, three, hey, three. that's fine with me. I'm going with Thruple. Um, no, but I heard that you started in soap operas, which I did not know. In 1979, Ryan's Hope. Mm. Right, no? And so we want you to do, a, if you'll play with us a little here, a dramatic read to camera. We're going to see if you still got those We're soap We're going to audition tops. for this. Okay. That's it? Yep. The diagnosis is I'm your brother. <laughs> And I'm your father. Never lose it. Never lose it. Oh, Ron Perlman, everybody. Video on demand and digital HD on December 7th.